That's telling us it's recording. Right, oh, five, four, three, two, one. G'day, everyone. Welcome back. It's my great pleasure and honor to introduce you all to Bodie Sanders or Dr. Bodie Sanders, the author of the Warrior Wisdom Books and the Inner Peace Set, which is the new one. And if that sounds familiar to my listeners, you know that we've used Bodie's books for a long time. How are you, Bodie? Thanks very much for coming on, mate. Good, Trevor. How are you? I'm a bit wet, mate, to be perfectly honest. As we were... <laughs> I heard that. <laughs> so am I pronouncing your name right? Yeah, Triffin? Triffin. Yeah, Triffin's Triffin. fine. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yes. No, I'm, I'm currently, as we record this, I'm, I'm cut off in a few different directions, but I'm on a hill and I've got Wi-Fi and I've got power. So we forge ahead, mate. Uh, we wanted to start, obviously, what I wanted to let you know is how we use your books, right? So my wife got me your Warrior Trilogy many years ago now. And I read those front to back. And uh, when we started the podcast, we would have, and this podcast has been dedicated to consciousness, uh, history, all manner of conversations we've had. And it was very early on in the piece that I said, hey, grab one of those warrior books and see what it says. And basically what we do is we'll grab whichever one. So whoever's sitting in this chair, will grab a book, we'll close our eyes and we'll open it up to a page and You've got no idea, mate, how many times that it's it, that whatever quote it is and whatever page it is, like close your eyes, open the book. The quote that is in that book it encapsulates the entire conversation that we've had. It has happened over a hundred times. And, that is interesting. And that that's how we've actually used those books in this studio to the point where uh, guests will come on and they're like, oh, can I do the warrior book? Can, can, I, can I be the one that sees what, see what it says? And it's aside from that, it, it, when it encapsulates it, you know, it's like, wow, that, that saying that you, the, the proverb or the quote that you've dug up for the book is so profound. You know, we, we can have a two yeah. and a half hour conversation and then one quote sums the whole lot up. And that's happened on so many occasions. And, that's wild. Uh, you know, we, we, I've already shown a couple of the, the boys the, uh, the, the inner piece set, and we're, we're looking forward to see what those reveal, mate. So I yeah, suppose... I, I may have to just take, uh, take those books and make the warrior I Ching out of it. <laughs> 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 you don't even have to, you don't have to, to you know, roll the dice or anything. You can just turn the page. <laughs> mate, all we do is, look, I'll tell you what we'll do, and I know it's with you and they're your books, but at the end of this, let's do it. We'll see what it says for us, okay? And you'll be amazed. Sounds good. You'll be amazed, mate. Um, so first question I maybe had for you is obviously mm-hmm. uh, bringing out the inner peace set uh, in this sort of time. Um, was that intentional? Was that always happening? Or Because, I mean, obviously we need a bit of inner peace. Well, yeah, I think it sounds like you've been following my writing for quite a while. Yes. And uh, you know that, you know, I've had my challenges over the years. Mm-hmm. You know, I you know, in the martial arts world, it, it's a it's a different genre. It's a different uh, uh, world than than you know other parts of the literary world. Yes. And if you start doing too well in the martial arts world, there's going to be somebody that wants to knock you down. Right. And I had my haters, you know, come out and just you know they tried to destroy me. Mm-hmm. You know, they wrote every lie you could think of. And in the midst of all dealing with all that. I ended up, you know, I've been in martial arts for 36 years now and uh, did football for six years, Mm -hmm. bodybuilding for like 20 something. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I've kind of, you know, worn a lot of my body down. Yeah. And so I had to have, oh, what, seven surgeries over the last five years or so. Okay. And uh, in the middle, I had to have three hip surgeries, two hip replacements. In the middle of recovering from those, I was in a car wreck, rear-ended by a drunk driver. Right. And so I had back and neck issues with that mm-hmm. and just got started to get recovered from all those surgeries and went to the doctor one day because I had a rash on my arm. Mm-hmm. And, I, you know, I just wanted some kind of cream or something to put on it mm-hmm. to make it go away. And when I walked in the doctor's office, you know, he came in with his folder and it was a different doctor than I normally see there. And he said, uh, you know, I said, well, I want you to look at this. He said, I don't give a damn about your rash. He said, we need to talk. And he sat down 
He said, uh, you know, my partner has been misdiagnosing your case. She did not read the MRI right, she, or she didn't tell you right or something, mm -hmm. but you need to get to uh, a specialist immediately. I've already called a brain surgeon. Uh, you need to, to call him, get to Denver as soon as you can. And I said, well, I came in here for a rash on my arm. I feel fine. I don't know what the hell you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Well, you know, we misread your MRI and, you know, I know you were told everything is fine, but your brain tumor is in, in it's grown very large. You need to get into the doctor immediately. Right. Okay. So I called, uh, called the brain surgeon up. And, you know, he said, no, you, you need to get up here right away. Mm -hmm. So I drove up to Denver. You know, he, he, he just uh, wiped his calendar, got me in as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. And uh, at the time, I was working on my book series, The Secrets of the Martial Arts Masters. It was, okay. a, uh, it, it was a three book series. I ended mm -hmm. up calling it down to a two book series. Mm -hmm. But um, I was almost done with that. And he said, you've got to have surgery. We got to remove this tumor. And I mm -hmm. said, well, um, yeah, I, I'm in the middle of the books, you know, getting these, you know, this, these books taken care of. I said, can we wait like six weeks? Cause I want to get these out for Christmas. Mm -hmm. And he looked at me and he said, you don't have six weeks. Oh, wow. He said, he said, if you hadn't have gone in with that rash on your arm, you would have been dead by Christmas. And wow. that was, it was in October. So I had to immediately go in for emergency brain surgery to remove that tumor. Mm -hmm was in the ICU for five days. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, well, you'll get a kick out of this. While I was in the ICU, you know, I'm laying there and, and uh, you know, I felt, you know, you, don't, you never feel great after surgery, no. but no. I felt okay. And, uh, you know, I was kind of bored of watching old reruns on the TV and mm -hmm. news and this kind of stuff. So I, I asked the nurse, I said, could you bring me some of your copy paper or clipboard and a, a, a pen? Yeah. So she brought me a stack of paper, a clipboard. I wrote two chapters for my Secrets of the Martial Arts Masters series while I was in the hospital in the <laughs> ICU. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I'm sitting there writing away, you know, not, you know, I'm on my pain meds and everything they were giving me. So some of the stuff I wrote was, you know, pretty wild. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, the doctor comes in and he says, what the hell are you doing? Oh, I, oh, I, I'm just, you know, making some notes. You, know, you just had brain surgery. And, 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 you know, the, the tumor was pushing on my, uh, the nerve, optical nerve, yeah, yeah. you know, behind my eyes. Yeah. And he, you're not supposed to be writing or using your brain. You're supposed to just be <laughs> relaxed. And so they took it all away. <laughs> but before they did, I got two chapters written. Oh, that's good. But, man. Uh, that's good. At least you get your chapters yet. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, you know, dealing with all that, uh, you know, I just kind of, it was a kind of a spiral. Yeah. It, you know, it had, uh. It, you know, the stress from, from all the surgeries. And before I got healed from one, I had mm -hmm. the next one, you know, we'd yeah, have one, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, you know, you got to have this one. Oh, how soon can I have it? Well, we can do it in five months. So I never got healed up. It was just one after the other. You never, you never recovered from the first one before you no. got to the next one. Okay. And, and then I had, you know, throat surgery during the midst of all that and in a couple of other surgeries. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, so it was just kind of, it kind of got to me a little bit. Yeah. And, you know, I, I just kind of stepped back from everything and said, you know, what do I want to do you know, next? Mm -hmm. I had, uh, you know, published a uh, book after that that was called, uh, titled Defiance, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. The Dark Side of the Martial Arts. Yeah. And it kind of, you know, <clears throat> excuse me, that kind of, uh, you know, put these guys, there's, there's a lot of frauds in the martial arts world. Yes, very much so, yeah. And uh, I kind of just outlined you know, what I'd seen them do to me or try to do to me and what they've done to many other people. Mm -hmm. And when I took that and just step by step, you know, what these guys do, you mm -hmm. know, how they're ripping people off. Yes. And, and even before that book came out, you know, mm -hmm. those guys were attacking the book and attacking me because they were afraid what it might say, even though mm -hmm. I didn't name names in it. You know, I mm -hmm. just, mm -hmm. you know, I, I put down what they do. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, after that, you know, it was such a battle that I just needed a break from everything. Yeah, yeah. And so I took I took a couple of years off without publishing a book, which is yeah. you know fairly rare for me. Mm. And uh, I did you know 
took some time to meditate and decide what I wanted to do next. Yeah. And I think, you know, you know, when COVID was getting started, I thought, you know, what, you know, what we really need right now is inner peace. Yes. And so I started, you know, doing, I've been so busy that I'd let my meditation slide. Mm -hmm. You know, I wasn't, I wasn't able to work out Mm -hmm. like I used to because of all the surgeries and recovering. And, you know, when, when you deal with your stress by working out and you can't, you can't work out and it it starts to pile up. And so I'd be a crazy person, Bodie, if I couldn't work (laughs) out, mate, I'd be a crazy person. Yeah, I was, I was getting there. And, um, so, you know, I, I, it hit me your meditation, you know, okay, you got to get yourself straightened out. you got to get, you know, back on track. Mm-hmm. You can't do everything you used to do, but you can still do a lot. Yeah. And you got to so reset, I, reset and yeah, re-engage. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so I started my meditation. I started yoga, you know, what I could do, you know, mm-hmm. I, of course I couldn't do what I used to, mm-hmm. uh, you know, started, you know, with my weights again mm-hmm. and, you know, light weights. And I thought, you know, I started studying my, you know, some of my writing and some of my you know, favorite books mm-hmm. and getting back into, you know, the, where I used to be. Mm-hmm. And, and then I thought, you know, this is going to be my next book. Yeah, right. The Art of Inner Peace, because mm-hmm. not only did I need it at the time, and I was able to use my you know, knowledge to get myself back to that point. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> and, uh, it, I thought, you know, the, everybody needs this right now. Because at yeah, the time, absolutely. you know, yeah. the, the you know, COVID was starting. Everybody was scared to leave their house or mm-hmm. to do, you know, to be around even their, their family. Mm-hmm. And uh, I thought, well, you know, this is just ridiculous. Mm-hmm. So I started writing The Art of Inner Peace. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, and I've had people ask, well, you know, how can you write about The Art of Inner Peace when you know, your other books are you know, about, you know, defense, self-defense and, and, mm. you know, you talk about, you know, what you, what, how to hurt somebody, how to do this, if you have to. And, it, you know, to me, well, it's not to me, it's the way it is. Mm. You know, you, you can be a warrior and still have inner peace. You can be at peace. You don't have to be stressed out all the time thinking everybody you run into is going to attack you. You know, Was it, is it, is it, buddy, it's, it's better to be, uh, uh, a warrior in a garden than a gardener in a war, mate, you know, like, right. it is, exactly. exactly. And, and, and I think that if, if some, if people are asking you that, I, I, I think they don't understand. Well, look, I suppose they haven't really read your books. Have they mate? You know, if you read no, the warrior no. wisdom, if you read those books, yes, you must prepare and you must be disciplined. However, yeah. you've still got to be peaceful, right? It's not, it's not attack. Right. It's just, preparedness it's, exactly you know so they just know. assume that they know what you know what i believe and what i think but mm. yeah you're right the people that wrote that probably have never read one of my books mm. and uh yeah because my books are, you know they're based on wisdom and living you know life to the fullest yes and I integrated that wisdom with the martial arts in yes. my books, which have to do with the martial arts. Not all of my books have to do with martial arts. No. You know, I've got a, a, a quote book out on, on you know, pure wisdom. Mm-hmm. I've got uh, a book out uh, called Secrets of the Soul, mm-hmm. which is a uh, Interesting little book. Yeah, you've got that one too. Just, a, just <laughs> you <got> both. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so not not, and I've got a book out for men called Men of the Code. Yeah, I so don't not, have that one. I don't. Have, yeah, I should have that one though, because what well, this podcast is called Unlocking the Code, Bodie. Oh yeah, you, you will like it. You yeah. will like it. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so you know, I don't just write about martial arts. You know, that's a small part of what I write about. Yeah. I uh, you know, if you look, even if you go through the books that like the, the, the war, uh, warrior wisdom series that you have. Yeah. If you go through there, they're not just for martial artists. No, that wisdom in those books can be applied to anybody and everybody. As I said, you, what you the thing is, buddy, you, we haven't been speaking about martial arts or any of that stuff when we've used those books, right? It's, uh-huh. we would, we've had a, we've had a, a discussion on spirituality. We've had a discussion on consciousness. We've been talking about, you know, ancient megalithic societies. We've been talking about advanced, you know, like so many subjects. Right. And at the end of it, we pull that warrior wisdom book out and it 
one quote encapsulates the entire conversation to the point where it's 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 a bit spooky you know so it, it, there's there's no i think the the misconception that people have is that this 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 wisdom that comes down to us from and what what i love about your books too mate is it's not just it's everybody right you you're using you know greek philosophers roman philosophers asian warrior quotes you know sun Tzu, all these people you 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 bringing the way you bring it together and encapsulate it is yeah is such a wide range and it's definitely not just for martial artists i mean i i, right. I i've studied martial arts myself uh interestingly injuries injuries have stopped me training full time but i still train most days out in the in the gym uh to yeah. maintain uh, my strength but as far as like yeah digging right back in I, I i'll hurt myself if i do that so I, I train by myself these days however you know as i said there's a flood happening outside of this room right now right. one of the reasons i decided to continue to do the interview today is because a lot of the stuff you talk about is integrity it, it's it's discipline it's this sort of stuff it's like well i'm dry i've got wi-fi i've got power it's a privilege to have you on of course I'm going to do it. Why wouldn't I do it? Right. Right. And yeah. I think it's, it's, it's more of a, um, I was going to say mantra, but that's not the word. It's a way of life, you know, uh, and that's, that's, well, that's what I, I, I coin, you know, the warrior lifestyle. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, and, uh, you know, when I say that, you know, most people, when they think of a warrior, mm. they automatically think of, you know, like special forces or something that, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. just trained to kill, mm. but that's not what I meant by the warrior lifestyle. No. Yeah, you know, and you know, I, the warrior lifestyle encompasses everything you were talking about. Mm. You know, it's spirit, mind, and body. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you know, I guess you know, the you know, calling it the warrior lifestyle may be a little misleading to some people, but that's what yeah. it meant to me because, you know, I kind of come from the mindset of you know being a warrior, but I also integrate you know the spiritual side, mm -hmm. you know, the mental side, you know, the the whole nine yards into it, and that's why my you know. At least half of my readers are not martial artists. Yeah. They have nothing to do with martial arts. I've got mm. grandmothers, granddads, mm. you know, people who had never set foot in a dojo in their life. Mm -hmm. And and they love it. It's because, you know, uh, real wisdom, universal wisdom, mm. you know, applies to everybody, Absolutely. not just, you know, one group of people. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I don't care who you are. If you get attacked in the streets, you, you're going to want to defend yourself That's even right. if you've had no martial arts you're going to try to defend yourself mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and and you know I, I like to ask kids you know if i go and, and speak to a, a dojo or something and uh you know i ask them well how many of you in here have been attacked and you know had your life threatened in the last month mm -hmm. usually nobody raises their hand mm -hmm. okay what about the last two weeks nobody raises their hand uh yeah. What about the last year? Has anybody been attacked on the streets in the last year? Mm. Most of the time, nobody raises their hand. Mm. And then I ask, well, well, you know, how many people in the last week have had a chance to cheat or lie or steal something from a store? Everybody raises their hand. Mm -hmm. You know, that's part of the warrior lifestyle is, is living with integrity mm -hmm. and honor and you know it is you know the martial arts part is just a small piece of, the, of, yeah. of what i teach i think the martial arts and you know training in martial arts is gives you some what well, gives you strength but it gives you and it gives you confidence but it's not about violence right i think any right. any true martial artist Bodhi, knows that right it's not about exactly it's 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 you never strike first you may strike last but you never strike first unless well, you, ne you never you never know? attack first yeah, yeah yeah you never attack first you want to strike right. first yes yeah that's but, true you are right yeah you know, yeah and people get that confused yes you know, that's true and yeah. they say you don't strike first well yeah you know, that indicates you wait for somebody else to throw a, you know a punch or to actually physically attack you hmm. you know the the first attack happens a long time before they throw the first punch that's true yeah and so yeah but in today's society you got to be careful because it's a balancing act. Mm -hmm. you, know, you, mm -hmm. you don't want to att ever attack first, no, but you right. do want to strike first. That's but right. in today's society, you got to defend yourself, not just against 
uh, you know, somebody that may be uh, trying to assault you, mm -hmm. but the legal system as well, because if somebody, you've got five people, you know, standing around and they mm -hmm. turn around and tell the police, oh no, this guy hit the other one first. That's right. And regardless it's, regardless so it's of the verbal abuse act. that happened. Exactly. Yeah. Regard, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, if, if you're in the Ukraine right now, you sure don't want to wait, you know, and, and, you know, wait to have somebody else no. You know, strike you first you've no. got to defend no. yourself yeah, you yeah, know yeah. the the you know Whatever, first assault coming, happened like, you know yesterday you know so it's already happened mm. so and and this you know the same thing applies to martial arts but the way to do it is and the way most people is you've got to train to where you respond fast enough that mm -hmm. you see this you see the punch coming mm -hmm. and you react and hit him before you get hit mm. and you know so you're striking first Mm. But the assault happens the second he may not even say a word. You can see it. You can feel it when you yeah, when yeah, you're you experienced that, enough. The shoulder twitch is gonna yeah yeah. It's, you it's, you yeah. can you can feel somebody's energy, mm. and, and you know kind of know what they have in mind before mm. they actually attack you. And I was talking to I was talking to someone about this the other day because I train on the bag most days, right? I, and mm. and uh, the the person was like, "Why do you train on the bag all the time?" And I was like, well, you know, it's the same thing. You train 10,000 punches, but you never throw a real one. You know what I mean? Because, yeah. because then if you have to throw the real one, you've done it 10,000 times. You know that combination. You know, you know, when you, you know, I, I'll, I'll swing the bag at myself. It's like, okay, so the bag's coming, dodge, dodge. You exactly. know, what am I going to do with that person, with, with that thing? And then if it, it's, it's muscle memory, if it happens in real right. life, I don't yeah. want it to happen. I'm not going to go looking for it. However, if it does happen, then that training is where it comes out. And I think what I was thinking too while you were talking, Bodhi, was like, you know, you know the Book of Five Rings, you know, Miyamoto Musashi. Right. It's like, you know, before you could become a warrior, you had to master the father, the artist, the healer, the lover, you know? And yeah. I think that's part of the big problem as, with men in Australia, I imagine in America and as, as a global society, we've lost sight of, the, of that that we are actually a multifaceted, multi-parted being. And some of the softer right. sides, we need to understand those. Yes, you need to be the warrior. You need to understand how to defend yourself and you need to be fit and strong and healthy. That's yeah. the best thing for you. Have you need to, you know, that the artist, the lover, the healer and the father need to be honored as well. And they need to be right. understood. You know, I think that's, it's so You have important. to have the whole package. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And that's, you know, and that's one of the things I see in the martial arts. A lot of martial artists, they, they are single-minded just in the training part. And when I say a training, I'm talking about the physical training. Yes, that's right, yeah. And so much of the martial arts world has now basically stopped teaching students uh, character traits you know, or, or any of the wisdom that goes along with it. You know, mm -hmm. Even the founder of Shotokan Karate, uh, Jenshin Funakoshi, actually said, you know, the purpose of, of karate is the perfection of character. You yes. Know, he didn't say it's to perfect your roundhouse kick. Mm. You know, he, yeah, and, you know, a lot of people say, well, yeah, that was him. That's not real. That's not real life. You don't use that on the street. But, and, like, it goes back to what the example I just gave you. Well, how many times have you had to use your martial arts on the street lately? That's right. Well, exactly. well I haven't, but, you know, 10 years ago, I, you know, I did so well. So you've gone 10 years, you haven't had to use your martial arts on the street, mm. but you'll be using all the rest of the stuff that I teach, the wisdom, the philosophy, mm. the spiritual side, mm -hmm. you, you'll use that every day. Mm. And, mm. and they don't seem to quite grasp that, that, well, well, yeah, but you know, you need to, you need to keep your skills up. Well, you can do both at the same time. Do you think that's a, do you think that's a, uh, is that another, uh, has that become a victim to the instant gratification society that we've created, Bodhi? Do you think that's part of that? I mean, what? Because I mean, obviously, you know, I learned martial arts in the eighties into the nineties, right? So mm. back then, like I can remember, Taekwondo was the first official martial art that I studied, and there was a little fella who was the uh, I can't remember. It's not the can't remember the uh not the master i can't remember the taekwondo anyway i feel bad now anyway he was kicking a bag when i first rocked up there and he's fly kicking this bag and it's pretty much touching the roof right he's five yeah. and a half foot and i'm like wow that's awesome 
but no, he when he, that first the group that we were a part of, we didn't get to hit a bag for ages, right? It it was mm. it was about that that sitting down and and you know the balance and how do you do this and what yeah. are you thinking in order to achieve that balance? That's what he went through with us for six months before we even <sighs> got into that stuff. Yeah, and, you don't you don't see that anymore. No, you no, know, and and you know part of it is you know. Hey, I'm sure you've you know, you know this as well. It's much easier to focus on punching and kicks and, mm. and you know you're moving and active mm. than to sit and meditate. Yeah. You know, that takes more discipline than you know getting in the gym, lifting weights, punching, doing your kicks, Absolutely training, does. sparring. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you know, to stop, make yourself stop and meditate for 30 minutes mm -hmm. and take an hour to study, you know, wisdom and philosophy. Mm -hmm. It, you know, it, that takes more discipline than it does to, to do the training. Absolutely. And so it's much yeah. easier for them. They go in, they train, they do, you know, whatever they're doing that night in the training and they're done. So they train, you know, a lot of these classes are hour, hour, to, uh, yeah. hour and a half. Mm -hmm. Okay. So they go do that. You know, that's what an hour and a half, an hour out of 24 hours in a day. Mm -hmm. They still can do the other stuff, but they don't discipline self, themselves no. to do it. No. If they even know to do it, you know, because mm. they're not, you know, a lot of the kids, they're not getting taught this stuff. To no, start they don't, with. Mate. You Look, know, as a yeah, teacher. Absolutely. Well, and, that, uh, I, I try and wind stuff. I ask that question, you know, of, of young men. It's like, what happened to integrity, boys? What happened to loyalty? What happened to honor? What happened to respect? Right. What happened to being a gentleman? What happened to these things that used to separate us as good men? You know, it seems to me right. these days we're going to stab each other in the back for a dollar. It's like, that's not who we are. That's not, you know, you, you want to be, like you say, you talk about the men of code or, you know, the, the warrior wisdom right. or that's not, you know, these, these philosophers and these, these men that have come down the, through the ages to, to provide mm. these profound statements and these, these teachings yeah. are, are here to separate us from that minutia of the society that we've created. And I think that's half the problem, Bodhi. I think we're, we're that lost, exactly. especially men, we're that lost. We don't know where we are. And, you know, if, if, if we... Uh, yeah, you, know, you should just send your books to everybody, mate. You know what I mean? Read these <laughs> and then get back to me. You know what I mean? Well, you know, this one is, uh, that's why I wrote this book. Yeah, men, see if I can get the, it on the camera here. I can see it, yeah, the men, of the men of the Code. I can't yeah. believe I don't have and, that and, one. And it's unlocking that's, the code. That's exactly why, I, why I wrote this is because the kids are not getting it today. I don't no. know. Doesn't sh Is it showing up? I, I can, it's, in the top, it's in the back right-hand corner in your, uh, in, your, in your feed, mate. So they can, yeah, there you okay. go. There you go. Yep. yep. So... You know, I wrote this because so many kids are not getting, they're not getting taught at home. You know, you know you're a teacher, and, you know, I used to be a teacher, mm. and you know, uh, well, I'm sure it's the same in Australia, but during parent-teacher conferences, some of these parents would come in and, and you were like, wow, I, you know, now I see why this kid's a problem. Yeah, absolutely. You know, he, you yeah. know, you know, he had no parents. Mm -hmm. I had, uh, you know, it, it's your know, parent teacher conferences are very interesting. I had this couple come in. Yeah, you know, everybody in school was having problems with this one kid. And you know, in my class, I was very strict. I just yeah. I didn't put up with any garbage. I don't put up with garbage in my life, and no. I wasn't going to do it in the classroom. No. And uh, you know, so I I kind of had him under control. He was out of control everywhere else. And uh, it was parent teacher conference, and I had really got cracked down on him the week before. Mm -hmm. And so I, he said, well, my mom and dad are coming for parent-teacher conference. So I thought, oh, great. You know, I'm, I'm going to hear it. I'm going to get chewed out. And this yeah, and yeah, yeah. So and then they walk in the room. And I'm thinking in the back of my mind, oh, crap. It's, comes in, this big guy, you know, big beer gut. He's got his gang, uh, motorcycle gang leather oh, vest on with his right. patches, yeah. you know, cut off sleeves. And, and his wife looked you know, rougher than he did. <laughs> and uh, I said, hey, well, this is not going to be fun. You know, he yeah. came in, he came over. Are you Bodie Sanders? I said, yeah. Well, I, I you know, I just want to tell you, you're the best damn teacher in this school. Yeah. Said, what? He kind of caught me off guard. And I said, oh, really? He, he said, yeah. He said, uh, you know, my son 
came home the other day and uh, told me what he had done. And I asked him, well, what, what did the teacher do? And he said, well, Dr. Sanders said, if I ever did it again, he was going to throw me through that window. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I said, I, I thought, oh, my God, he's going he's gonna, to, you know, pound on me here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and he said, I wish these other teachers would be like you. He mm. said, he said, you know, you're the only teacher that I've come to tonight that hadn't, you know, sugarcoated everything because he had asked me, well, how's he doing? I said, well, yeah, yeah he doesn't do a damn thing in here. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and uh, he said, well, you're the only one that told me that. He said, every other teacher, just how great he is, what a great kid he is, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I knew for a fact he wasn't because yeah, they had wrong. more problems with him than I did. Yeah. And he was, he said, you're the best teacher here because you know, he said, you're, you teach like teachers used to teach. Mm -hmm. And it just went on and on. And I said, wow, you know, I, you know, I didn't expect that. Mm. And, you know, these kids are not getting disciplined. They don't no, get no discipline, discipline in the exactly, school because yeah. everybody's afraid to get sued. Mm -hmm. They're not getting taught character traits or, or uh, morals, honor, mm -hmm. character, integrity, because they fear, well, you know, we can't, it's not up to us to, to push our ideals and our way of living on everybody else. They should mm -hmm. learn it themselves. Well, where do they think they're going to learn it? Mm -hmm. You know, if, if they're not getting it at home, not getting it in the schools, mm -hmm. Where else are they going to learn it from? Mm. Their their buddies in school, which no. you probably don't know any more about they it don't than know they any do. Either. No, that's right. Movies, TV shows, and music. And so, what are they learning from movies and and music today? Yeah, nothing that nothing that has to do with honor and character. I can guarantee. Capitalistic, you. materialistic bullshit is what they're learning from yeah, that stuff, mate. Exactly. Yeah. You will. You'll enjoy this, right? So, I, I don't teach. I, I teach young adults, right? So basically, uh -huh. I spent uh, a long time in. Uh, a few different professions and so what i've done is i've gone got the teaching qualifications in those professions so i teach young adults right so i'm getting these kids at 18 through to 25 26 somewhere in there some older some younger but that's that's the core demographic that i i teach yeah. and when i was doing face-to-face -face classes the courses i used to do were eight weeks long mm -hmm. and i'd get these little punks come in you know they'd failed high school and and the thing is the reason that I think they fail is they don't have teachers like you, Bodie, because the thing is I get them in here and you'll like this, right? So we have a morning break and we call it Smoko down here in Australia. And it's yep. like, okay, if you come back late from Smoko, 20 pushups and they go, Oh yeah. Ha, ha, ha. But then what I would do is I would come back late on purpose and I would do 20 pushups. And then it's like, Oh, if the teacher's doing 20 pushups, then what are we going to do? And I would make them do it. Yeah. And, you know, I had the, like the, the manager of the, the training organization that I was working with. She's like, do you make these boys do pushups? I said, yes, I do. I said, did you, he goes, she goes, did you send some of the kids out of class home today? I said, yes, I did. Why? Because they misbehaved. They disrupted the class. Get out. If you want to, you want to think about it, come back tomorrow. And do you know what happens though? Within at the end of those eight weeks, you should have seen some of the parties we used to have as graduations. You know what I mean? And I could show you messages, and I'm still in touch with hundreds of my students, Bodhi, because I was the first person that said, No, 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 no. That's bullshit. And you know it's bullshit. So don't yeah. do it. You know? And and I'd ask these questions of these people. You know, integrity is doing the right thing when no one's looking. Do you use integrity in your life on a day-to-day -day basis or do you not? You know, when was the last time you showed honor? When was the last time you were a gentleman? You know, and it's, and, and inevitably I get, oh, he said, she said. It's like, no, that doesn't make yeah. any difference to what you do, right? Your choice and your actions are not governed by other people, right? Right. You know, yeah. being a gentleman in 2022 is a bit of a tough gig. Sometimes you'll get abused for it, right? Right. Doesn't Does that mean you don't do it? No, it doesn't mean you don't do it. Well, that's uh, my favorite quote is from uh, Balthasar Gracian. And it says, you know, it, the man of principle doesn't forget who he is because of what others are. Yes, absolutely. And, and yeah. you know, if you just remember that, you know, well, you know, so-and-so did this. So what? 
doesn't, doesn't matter. matter. It doesn't matter. And that's and that's you know part of what I teach in the art of inner peace mm. is you know you got to not let the actions of others affect your life. Mm-hmm. You know mm-hmm. you don't have to allow their actions to upset your inner peace mm-hmm. to to make you angry to make you sad to you know make you feel bad i mean nobody can make you angry no. nobody can make you sad mm. or feel bad you decide mm. you know to feel those things you decide mm. to get angry mm. you decide okay i don't like what he's doing so i'm gonna get mad about it i mean you it? don't you don't think those thoughts but mm. that's what's happening is it is it i'm trying to remember what is anger it's the punishment we give ourselves for someone else's mistake is that the quote or it's a long yeah, it's lines, some, it? yeah something yeah. like that yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. and yeah. there's another that uh I, I think uh came from buddha and he said you know anger is like holding a hot coal in your hand you know and getting ready to throw it at somebody else you're the one that gets burned that's right yeah yeah i think it i was thinking as well because i know i do one of my passions and along with this sort of stuff, consciousness and, you know, helping men and that sort of stuff is uh, mm-hmm. ancient civilization, megalithic civilizations and stuff like that, the pyramids and all yeah. that stuff. And I had an experience last year with some, some of those researchers in that field and look, not, not similar stuff. It doesn't, it doesn't matter what the field is, right? I, I, I am an objective critical thinker, Bodhi. So I yeah. don't tie myself to any ideas. I'm not attached to any ideas. I will give everything its merit and make my own decision, you know? And because of that, I got uh, ostracized uh, last year. And I suppose what I wanted to touch on is that part of your books, your new books, and uh, that's, I did, I allowed that to happen, right? And this is, I know we're talking esoterically about philosophy, but it's hard work, you know? You know, yeah. I mean, I, I've been, you know, on the warrior path or, you know, w- w- however you want to put it for mm-hmm. a very long time. And yeah, last year I allowed some people to affect what I was doing, you know, and, yeah. and it's the, the discipline and the, and the mental discipline. No one's perfect. I think it's, but you know, and, and right. we've got to continually work at it. Uh, and, you know, part exactly. of the whole, part of the whole resetting my podcast this year, this is, you know what's interesting, buddy, right? So I, a few months ago, I'm like, okay, no, no, I'm going to reset the podcast. What I do shouldn't be affected by anyone else, right? Right. So in the past few months, I've had uh, excellent uh, um, content. I've had some very excellent people come out of the woodwork and go, hey, can I talk to you? And then it's it hasn't culminated. It hasn't finished at all. But here I am talking to the guy whose books have provided me with wisdom for five years. So it's like, if you change your mindset and you use intention and you you're aware of what you're doing, good things will happen. I think that's, you know, it, yeah. it's not, it's not like a, you're going to win the lotto tomorrow, but it's, right. it's these lessons work, but they're also hard work to maintain as well. I think is, you know? Yeah. And, and you had touched on it uh, just now that it's, you have to be consistent. Mm. I mean, it's, you know, developing inner peace is not, you know something okay it's you know, like you know your goal is to get a black belt okay i'm going to do this this and this this mm. keep going for year two years i got my black belt okay i'm done i'm a black belt mm. that's the way a lot of people look at it mm. you know inner peace is not a goal that you achieve one time you put it in your pocket you got yeah. it you don't have to worry about it you have to work at it every day it, you know throughout the day you mm. know sometimes every minute Mm-hmm. to maintain it mm. you know and and you know i talk about that in the book the first thing you have to do is you know your subconscious mind plays a bigger part than mm. most people realize you know you say subconscious mind most people they go to uh the subliminal cds and stuff that came out and got popular back in mm. i don't know the 80s or 90s mm-hmm. and, and that's about as, as far as they're you know thinking about the subconscious mind goes but you're, it's getting proven now that, uh, what was the percentage? I think it was like 93% of all of our actions come from the subconscious Absolutely. mind. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and, you know, in order to, you know, if you want to change your life, if you haven't been living a life of inner peace and you want to mm-hmm. change your life, mm-hmm. the first thing you've got to do is cleanse your subconscious mind. Yes. Because you, you've got 
uh, you know, you've got things in your subconscious mind who, that's been implanted in there. Say if you're in your 40s, mm -hmm. you know, for four decades. And a lot of those beliefs are incorrect. Yep. They're not serving you anymore. No. Uh, you know, a lot, of, a lot of stuff in your subconscious mind are defense mechanisms that you put into your mind mm -hmm. to deal with whatever you were dealing with at one time, mm -hmm. but you're not dealing with that anymore. It, but the, those thoughts are still in your subconscious mind mm -hmm. and they're still, you know, they're still um, directing your words, your mm -hmm. actions and your thoughts, Absolutely. even, even if you don't know it. I mean, mm -hmm. if you are used to responding a certain way and you've mm -hmm. done it for 30 or 40 years, and somebody comes up and, and insults you, it's automatic. Mm -hmm. to, to develop that inner peace, you have to get rid of those thoughts, replace them with new thoughts that mm -hmm. actually serve you better. Mm -hmm. And then you have to continue to not let those thoughts back in because yes, they will wrong. slip back in. Yes. It's easy. You know, somebody can push your buttons. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know what I mean when I say push Absol your button absolutely, buttons. Yep. Um, somebody can push your buttons. And you just forget about inner peace or, or being, <laughs> yeah. being a gentleman and you go off on it right yeah, yeah, then. Yeah, yeah. And you really have to fight against that. And yes. it takes a lot of self-discipline to do yes, that. It does. Yes, so it does. You know, developing inner peace is the easy part. Maintaining mm -hmm. it is the difficult part. Uh, yeah, you're totally right. You, to uh, you just, you, it's funny, you, you're talking and I'm thinking early on in the podcast, we described, uh, I like to give analogies, right? And we describe these things that don't serve you. Like you said, if, you, if you've been uh, having the same process of thoughts for 30 years, 40 years, however old you are, it's like we described it back in the day. It's like a six lane highway, right? So, you know, it's, it's, that's exactly it. And then when you're trying to change that process, it's like you're taking a bulldozer through the bush, you know, like that's, it's, and yeah. it's not, it's, it's, it's a bad track. It's, it's, it's rough and rocky and, you know, but the more you can change your process, then that six lane highway gets one lane chopped off it. And that road, that new process gets better, uh, well, right. well, you know, well built. Uh, yeah. And then hopefully you won't flick back to the, uh, the base of uh, levels, but you, inevitably you will. I think these, that's human, being human body, isn't it? You know, yeah, it, yeah. It, it's, and, it's a and constant it, process. It's, it's, when I say cleanse your subconscious mind, you're changing your subconscious yes. mind. Yeah. You're not, you're not going to ever, and I don't think you will ever completely get rid of it. I, and I like to compare it to a garden. Mm -hmm. Say, so, you know, if you have a garden plot mm -hmm. and you, you say you've never gardened, you've never tilled it up, you just mm -hmm. got, you know, a plot of weeds out there. So you go and you till it up and, and you know, the first year, you know, those weeds are going to be coming up because you're Going tilling back. up yeah. and activating seeds that's been dormant and, and you're going to have all kinds of weeds that yeah. you have to weed. But if you keep doing that year after year, you're, you're going to have less weeds, less weeding to do, but you're never going to have a time that your garden is completely weed free. Never. No. You know, it, it, it's, you know, it just doesn't work like that. Mm. You know, and it doesn't have to come even if you cleanse that soil Mm -hmm. And you, you have, you know, weeded it year after year. You've gotten rid of the weeds. You know, still seeds are going to blow from other people's gardens over to yours or other people's yeah. plot or wherever. Mm -hmm. You know, it's never going to be a time no. that you don't have to work to maintain that garden. That's true. That's very true. Yeah. And, and, and it's, and then I think there's that, it's that dreaded D word, isn't it? Discipline. Okay. Yeah. I think yeah. there's been, there's a, there's a misconception about, well, I mean, I know growing up as a, in, in my generation, we saw discipline as punishment, right? One of the big things, you know, when I, cause I started the podcast about five or six years ago. And so prior to that, I was very much, I had a, I, I nearly, I nearly died in 2013 buddy. And basically Ooh. coming out of that, it was like, okay, I sort of, I, I've always been a study of the wisdoms and all that sort of stuff. It's like, okay, end of 2013, what am I actually doing? What's going on here? I need to sort my mental health out. I need to sort stuff out. And uh, it was coming out of that, that I had to re-engage discipline. And I hadn't mm -hmm. thought, because I'd been training most of my life, but I'd never looked at it through the discipline lens. And one of the big, 
mental thing blocks that I had is that I thought discipline was punishment and it's yeah. not, it's not, you know, the, the Jocko Willink, one of his favorite sayings is discipline equals freedom, you know, and because it is, right. and it does, you know, I think yeah. if you can, it's that consistency that'll give you that retraining of your subconscious, you know, go back to the garden right. analogy. The only way your garden is going to get as weed free as you can get it is if you're out there a couple of times a week, picking those weeds out, you know, yeah. you leave it. And that run. takes discipline. You exactly. know, most people, yeah. nobody ever wants to go and weed the garden. It's not no. fun. No. You know, it, no. It's not something you do as a hobby or, you know, I can't wait to get home this weekend so I can weed the garden. Yeah. You know, it, it's, <laughs> nobody ever said that. No, that's right. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, it takes discipline to do anything in your life that is worth doing. Mm -hmm. I'll put it that way. You know, if, if you didn't have discipline, you wouldn't get off the couch. You would just sit and watch TV mm -hmm. all day until you go to sleep at night, get up, get a sandwich every now and then, plop back down on the couch. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people live their life They like do that. do that, don't they? Yeah. And uh, it's, it, it's sad. Mm -hmm. and, that, and all that is is a lack of discipline because, mm -hmm. you know, you get up in the morning and you're like, oh, I don't feel like doing anything. You go sit on the couch, you start watching TV. All of a sudden, mm -hmm. it's lunchtime. You get up, get something to eat. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm kind of tired. You sit back down and you start watching TV. Mm -hmm. And before it, you know, it's dark, eh, I'll grab some dinner. Yeah, I'm tired. I'm going to go lay in the bed and watch TV. You know, that's that takes no discipline whatsoever. No. No. You know, it takes discipline when you feel like doing nothing but sitting on the couch watching TV mm -hmm. to go work out, go train, mm -hmm. you know, you know, go for a jog or, you know, read and study or get mm -hmm. up and go meditate. And, mm -hmm. you know, meditation should be an easy thing to do. You, know, you sit down quietly and it, but it takes discipline to do it mm -hmm. because you, you really are not in the mood to meditate, mm -hmm. but you know, you got to, you are, you're too busy. You've got so much work that needs to be done. But you know, okay, if I keep going, I'm not going to get my meditation in today. Yeah. It takes discipline to say, okay, I'm going to stop. I'm going to go do a meditation. Mm. And, and most people do not discipline themselves. No. They don't get it in school. There, there's rarely any discipline in school anymore. I know. And so they're not getting it home. They don't get it in school. And by the time they're adults, what, uh, what they've learned is to do whatever they're in the mood to do. That's and, right. And, and there's no discipline to that. And, mm. and we're seeing the results of it in our culture today. We are, mate. We, and, and like as a teacher with those, the courses that I used to do, I would take unruly, smart-ass little punks. And in eight weeks, like I know some of these kids, they've got, they've got apprenticeships now. They are tradesmen. They've, they've you, know, they're, you know, they were into drugs and all these sorts of things. It only took yeah. eight weeks, Bodie. It took eight weeks of them being with me. And I look, I, they did the work. I was just the facilitator. You know, I just made sure that I kept them in line. Yeah. But that process of the discipline that I showed them, they, in eight weeks, they were, oh, wow, this is actually what we're supposed to do, you know, exactly. and, and making that little bit of extra effort makes the difference. I, I've said this to my wife a lot. I mean, I've got a wife, I've got two small children. Uh, well, they're not there, seven and four now, however. Um, and, you know, she's like, how do you get up at 4.30, 4, 4 5 o'clock in the morning to work out? I wouldn't have the energy to do that. I'm like, neither do I. I don't yeah. want to do it. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't yeah. necessarily feel like it. I like riding my mountain bikes, one of the things I do. And yeah. I, I, I've, I've told my students this and, and it's like, I'll do a 25 kilometer ride, which is what uh, 12 miles or something. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, the first two miles, my brain's going, you'll be right. Turn around. You can go home. It's okay. You don't have to do yeah. it. Yeah. You know, but once you punch through that and you get past that mental battle, mm -hmm. then yeah, you're free and you can go yeah. and you can ride and you can come back and you feel better, you know, yeah. but it, it takes that discipline to punch through that mindset because yeah. yeah it's so easy it's so easy i think i think they say you've got five seconds like once you make a decision you've got five seconds to get it to actually action that decision or mm. you won't do it you know like right and and especially with working out or, or meditation it seems to yeah. be personal growth decisions in this modern day are much harder than uh 
you know, as you say, well, that's because we have so many other distractions. Yeah. And, you know, before the internet, you know, or before computers, and, you know, right. I didn't have a computer until, oh, I, I had two kids before I had my first computer. Yeah. And, uh, you know, think about back in, say, 1980. Mm -hmm. You know, when I grew up, uh, you know, I was in high school in the 70s and 80s. Mm -hmm. And we had a TV with rabbit ears that got three stations mm -hmm. and they were snowy. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. You, you know, the best you, did, you know, you weren't really, you weren't really tempted to sit and just watch TV yeah. or stare at the computer or, or scroll on social media, mm -hmm. you know, cause you know, there was no such thing. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you sit there, if you're, you're bored, you got an option. <laughs> you get up and do something or you sit there and be bored. Mm -hmm. And that was your option today. I, they can sit and stare at their phone no matter where they're at mm -hmm. or they can sit in front of the computer and just scroll down and it's hypnotic yeah you're like scrolling down on, on social media it's hypnotic it's like you're you're looking at a group of pictures and you see five at a time and you say well i want to see what the next five are the yeah. next five the next five and it's just it's addicting and it's so easy for people now just to sit and do nothing and mm -hmm. waste time mm -hmm. because they have so much. They get tired of playing on their phone. They can do stuff on the computer. They get tired of that. They can watch, you know, Netflix a multitude of yeah, TV yeah. channels yeah. Yeah, that's right. or Netflix or whatever. Yeah. And so they have so many more distractions today than we had growing up yeah. that it, it's, it's, I think for them to have discipline is much harder than it mm. was for us. And, um, uh, there, you know, I was, um, I was at a small school in Missouri and my wife and I were teaching and, you know, it was in the middle of nowhere in the sticks. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I had a black belt at the time. I was mm -hmm. first degree black belt. Mm -hmm. And I decided to start teaching Shotokan karate because those kids didn't have anything to do there. It was just, there was no sports, no nothing. It was just yeah. in the middle of nowhere. And so I started it and I told them on the first class, I said, you know, if I find out from your teachers, you're, you're being a jerk, you're not doing your work, you're being impolite, or if I find this out from your parents at home, you're out of here. I won't teach kids like that. Yeah, fair enough. And I, I turned quite a few kids away yeah. you know, from my karate class. And other guys said, well, you should have kept those kids in there and, and taught them to do right. Well, you know, no, first, they need to have the, uh, the motivation to Absolutely. do right mm. you know you don't take you know, a punk put him in a martial arts class and expect him to not go and bully somebody down the line if That's you're not the problem, teaching yeah. the principles mm. and, and teaching him you know when to defend himself when not to yeah teaching him you don't use martial arts yeah. you know, you know, against other people mm -hmm. you know you don't be a bully yeah you know, and a lot of places are not teaching character traits to the kids no and you know i did and i got the feedback i got within two or three weeks of starting that class i had teachers coming and thanking me because trouble kids you know i you know i gave them each a chance you know yeah. they got one chance, one and that chance was yeah it. and they said you know they've been polite they say yes ma'am no ma'am they do their work i don't know what you're doing but please keep it up well, you've just and, shown them a bit of discipline, but you've also yeah, given exactly. them a chance. You've exactly. given them a bit of accountability, a bit of responsibility, you know, and if, if they take that chance and use it, you're going to give them respect. Yeah, and, and most of them want that. Exactly. They really, they well, do, but do. nobody has given it to them because they're afraid, oh, I can't do that, or, you know, mm. I'm going to get, I'm going to lose my job. I'm going to get sued. The parents mm. are going to come up and claim, mm. you know, or, you know, the kids should make up their own mind about mm. this. Mm. Well, you know, kid you know you're a parent and a teacher for a reason mm -hmm. you know the kids are not able just to make up their own mind about you know what's right and wrong mm -hmm. what you know what is good character traits mm -hmm. you know how they should talk you know they learn that from somewhere Absolutely. and that's why you're supposed to you're as a parent are supposed to be teaching those kids yeah as a teacher you should be teaching those kids you mm -hmm. know when i was in high school i had i had a great principal Mm. and uh he you know he would beat the crap out of you if you were in the wrong he had a battle about this long yeah. about this wide and, and he would tear you up with it 
-hmm. And, you know, I, you know, I kind of grew up, you know, I was a fighter in high school. I, mm -hmm. you know, I, I kind of grew up a street fighter mm -hmm. and, you know, that we were at a track meet one time mm -hmm. and there was a fight behind the, the, uh, behind the bleachers there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I watched the fight and, you know, this one kid and just, he got his butt kicked. Mm -hmm. And the next day I got called into the office. I said, well, I don't know why I'm getting called into the office. I didn't fight. I just was standing back there watching. Mm. And the principal called me in. And this is the difference between good educators and crappy educators. Yeah. He called me in. He sent me down. He said, you know, I, you know, I hear you were at that fight yesterday. I said, well, I, you know, I didn't have anything to do with it. I was watching. Mm. He said, well, you should have done something because I've seen you fight and you could have taken care of this. He said, you should have stepped in there and stopped the fight at, you know, before, you know, the guy got knocked out, you know, yeah. got, he got beat up pretty good. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said, you should have stepped in there. He said, you would have stepped in there. The other guy would have stopped immediately because you have a reputation and they don't, you know, he wouldn't have wanted to fight you. Yeah. He said, he said, there's a time to fight and a time not to fight. He said, yeah. you need to know the difference. And that's, Wow. You don't hear that today. <laughs> you would <laughs> not hear confirmed. that in any Absolutely. public school today. No way. No and, way. and that, you know, you know I, I've never had a principal like that. I've taught at several different schools. Yeah. And they're all, even if a kid is getting bullied and he stands up for himself and de mm. just defends himself, mm. the basic, I mean, I'm not talking Punishment. about taking the other guy down. I'm just talking mm. about basic self-defense. Mm. He gets kicked out of school. They call the cops on him. Everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just ridiculous. That's not teaching him anything. No. You know, it, it's uh, it really is a sad situation we're in. Oh, it is. We've lost sight. You know, we've lost sight of 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 so many things, Bodie. You know, I and it's concerning because I see it in these young people. It's like, yeah. you know, and I see it in people my age as well. It's like I get people my age going, "How? Why are you?" How can you talk about this stuff? So I talk about this stuff because you know, I'm one of those men, Bodie, that I really try and practice what I preach right. every day. Am I, am I perfect at it? Of course I'm not. Do I get it right all the time? Of course I don't. But do I do my best every day? You know, and look, I've got, well, I've got six of your books and I've got at least, I don't know, 300 of your memes saved in my phone because mm. these things are what we need to try and do you know yeah. well i look i suppose mate what what are we you know i i, I when i knew we were sitting down i'm like how do, is there a way forward mate what's what's your perception i mean you've studied all these great masters you you've you've written multiple books uh you know you've you've i can imagine for every quote you put in you probably didn't put in 10 you know so i know yeah. that you've read all the works how do we, cause I mean, if you get another person or a small group of people and, and, and showed them this conversation, they would say, yeah, absolutely. I totally agree with you. That's a great idea. Mm -hmm. But as a collective, we can't figure it out. So it's like, what do we do, mate? What, 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 what is a well, way forward? You know, What's your perception? That's where your vote comes into play. Yeah. You know, if you vote the wrong people into office and they're controlling the school system, the government, mm. government agencies, and they have an opposite view of what we're talking about. Yeah. You know, it's the wisdom, the character traits. They, they look at, there is never any reason for violence, ever, none. Mm. Hey, anybody who believes that doesn't know what the hell they're talking about. Exactly, yeah. And, you know, and I guarantee you, they don't believe it either. Mm. You know what? You put them in a dark alley and, a, and two or three gang members come up there mm -hmm. and they're just going to stand there and, 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 you know, get beat down and not even try to defend themselves. Well, they don't believe it, that. It's, they'll it's, they'll it's, fight with every, every fingernail they got. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, it's a bit, yeah. it's a bit, it's a bit harsh, Bodie, but I think the one is that, you know, how do you turn a pacifist into uh, someone who loves violence? You put a gun to their child's head. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's like, exactly. That's harsh, but that's the reality. You know what I mean? It's like, if you don't, I was thinking while you were while you were talking earlier. I used to work in oil and gas, right? So we worked on uh -huh. oil rigs and stuff like that. Yeah. Now back in the day, if we were on the rig floor and two boys had a problem, right? You'd drop it, 
But then the deal was, after work, five minutes behind the water tank, first one who bleeds win, loses. Right? Huh. And guess what had happened? You'd go around the water tank, you'd sort it out, someone would get a cut lip or, you know, a, a cut on their eyebrow or whatever. Yeah. Most of the time, you bought that bloke a beer later that right. night and exactly. everything was fine. You know? And that's Be- how I grew up. At, you know, in, in school, you know, we go out on the weekend. You know, I, I never had a good friend that we didn't have a, a fight at some point. Oh, yeah, you, you know? got it. Yeah. And, <laughs> and after the fight the next day, we were friends again. Probably better Today, friends. the kids Probably can't do friends. that. Yeah. yeah. Today, they can't do that. You know, if two kids get in a fight at school now, you know, they're dealing with social services, mm-hmm. the police, they get suspended from school. Mm. And, and a, a lot of times, you know, they, they kick them out of school for the rest of the year. They, it, they try to destroy their life. Mm. And it, it's just ridiculous. And that's because, and I'll just be blunt, we have morons running our school systems Absolutely. and a lot of our government. And, well, and that's yeah. the bottom line. And that's Absolutely. until that changes, we're not going to see the change trickle down. But people are starting to wake up. I think that they, look, they're I starting think, yeah. to they're starting yeah. to wake up. They see their freedoms disappearing, yeah. and they're starting to wake up and stand up for it. I see it in Australia. I see it yeah. in Canada. I mm. see it here in the states. Mm. It, I see it in England. Mm. They're waking up all over, and they're standing up for their freedom, and they're taking it back. Yeah, absolutely. And and when they do, they're going to see. Okay, you know, we tried this. Uh, well, whatever they want to do, you know, everybody's okay. Everyone's cool. You know, and it doesn't yeah, work. Yeah, yeah. You know, everybody's not okay. It's not yeah. okay to be an asshole. No. And, and it's not okay to think that that I'm here to live my life according to whatever you see fit. Yeah. You know, you're not here to live by my rules. I'm not here to live by your rules. Mm. You know, and, and you're damn sure not here to tell me how to raise my kids. Absolutely. And that's what's happening. We're seeing it in, you know, across the world and that can't happen. Parents have to stand up like they're doing, uh, they're doing in many places mm-hmm. here. Mm-hmm. They're standing up even in San Francisco mm-hmm. this, uh, this week, they recalled three radical school board members and kicked them off the school board. Good. And, and so it's starting to spread Throughout the states, mm. people have had enough of this garbage, and they they're turning back to common sense. And you mm. know what I teach in my books, you know, it's proven wisdom. You know, yeah, absolutely. I, I, I have I have wisdom quotes from uh, the time from uh, the time of the pharaohs mm-hmm. on up to modern day, mm-hmm. and uh, everything in between, yeah, and from yeah, yeah. all areas of the world. And absolutely. you know what's interesting when you study this. And, and, you know, I've studied all the religions. I've studied, you know, wisdom from throughout the world. Mm. And when you start to do it, you see that it's intertwined. Mm. It's universal. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, what, what has happened is our, and, you know, a lot of people in our modern culture have decided, uh, well, we don't need that, uh, you know, the old wisdom, the ancient wisdom. Yeah. You know, that's, that's, you know, out of date. You know, we don't, we're, we're more advanced and we're, we're <laughs> more intelligent than that. And, and they blow it off and they think that, you know, it, you know, they don't have to even, even think about that kind of stuff. Yeah. And they've lost it. And, and they're finding out not only did they not have common sense, they don't have any sense whatsoever. No, no, no. It's unbelievable. Like, and, you know, I, I sort of, I've, I've said this a fair bit. It's, I think at some point, I don't know when it happened, but the, we serve the system now. The system doesn't serve us, right? Exactly. These, these, exactly. these leaders that aren't, uh, you know, a leader's little fingernail think that we serve them. That's not how this works, right? Yeah. They serve us, right? They'd, exactly. And I think what's happening around the world, and it is growing every day, is that people are realizing, hang on a minute, we're – there's 150 of us and there's five of you. How about you shut up? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because what you're doing obviously is not serving me. It's not serving, you know, if we're talking about school board, it's not serving me. It's not serving right. my kids. It's, and I think it's, it's going to reverberate. I mean, my, my, my hope is, look, I think we're in for a bit of a rough time for the next little while, but I'm hoping that, you know, you know, my children as they grow up will maybe get a reset 
into well i, I think it's going to happen before that i yeah. think i think it, we're we're in the initial stages of that happening and people are waking up like i said you know all around the west mm -hmm. and i think that common sense is going to come back into fashion yeah and and you know you know what? What I put in my books, I consider common sense. It is common, common sense. sense teaching. It is common sense. It is and common sense. you would not believe how many emails and and uh, you know letters and stuff I receive, telling me, "Oh my God, I love your teachings. I've never heard anything like this before. I've never seen anybody teach this." And I, I'm just like, every time I hear it, even I never get used to it. It's like, how could you not have heard this kind of teachings mm. before? I, I, I just can't even comprehend it. Mm. And it's it just, and, and these are not kids. These are adults. Yeah, I know. And, I'm, and then you start thinking, okay, if these adults have never heard, you know, what I teach about character, discipline, honor, integrity, mm. you know, all, all the different character traits. Okay. They've never heard of it. They, they certainly didn't teach it to their kids. Mm. You know, so these kids, you know, have no clue. Mm. They had, they had no chance to develop this. They don't just develop it on their own. Mm -hmm. And I've seen, you know, I, I got uh, a couple of more interviews set up here in March mm -hmm. and, uh, and they're both with young guys, I think in like 23 or 24, they're mm -hmm. doing podcasts mm -hmm. and they're both doing it on teaching young men to become, uh, you know, uh, man of integrity and gentlemen. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm thinking, okay, that gives me hope. We're seeing guys in their mm -hmm. early twenties. Mm -hmm. seeing that that this is missing and they're starting to try to bring this back yes and yes i see that as well yeah so yeah. i i think people are waking up and i think it's going to be the younger generation that changes things i, yeah, think, I think yeah i think so too it. yeah i think there's a general so like i'm well, i'll be 39 in a couple of weeks time mm -hmm. and there's a there's like a generation below me that's is a bit lost right i don't know what happened to those guys i think they're yeah. They're the ones that came up with the internet, right? That, that that's, mm -hmm. but the ones below them, the 22, 23, 25 year olds, yeah. I'm seeing the same thing, you know, like I'm getting these guys come to me in Australia through my podcast and through my uh -huh. teaching. And they're like, man, I want to hear more about this stuff. Can you please teach me? We're, we're lost. I said, I know you're lost. That's why do you think I'm yeah. teaching this stuff? You know, why do you think I'm trying to share this esoteric wisdom right and i think yeah. there's a there's an arrogance about modern society that needs to be nipped in the bud because right how is it that we oh yeah no we we why, why would we pay attention to marcus aurelius why would we pay attention to you know all these great asian philosophers and uh, european philosophers and you know indian philosophers all these people this stuff that's been around for ten thousand years how arrogant are you to think that you know better you know, yeah. the reason it has survived 10,000 years because it is profound, because it is true, right? It, yeah, exactly. And what, and what you find with a lot of these philosophers, they're really just putting a twist on the same idea of that universal truth of yeah. discipline, morals, you know, all these things. Right. It's, a, it's just different interpretations of the universal truth of what it is to be human. And I think that the distractions that have been put in front of us uh and look you know you're a bit older than me my generation i still used to handwrite letters you know like that's the thing and when i was a kid i used to handwrite. oh letters. man i forgot to dye my beard I, I... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um i used to handwrite letters when i was a kid you know what i mean so it's like it's i've seen that go through right yeah and I lost my train of thought. I thought you when you said no, you I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think we were just talking about the fact that um, the this esoteric wisdom well, comes to us for a reason. You know, the, well, these I, profound I think the things. younger generation is is seeing that you know, the social media and, and you know the scrolling and the the shows, the music, they're seeing that something's missing. It's empty. Yes. And they're getting this feeling and they're like, okay, you know, this, you know, they, they see the older movies with John Wayne and stuff. And they say, yeah, look at men back then and mm -hmm. look at men today. Mm -hmm. What, you know, something is missing here. Yeah, what know, happened, we're not yeah. growing up to be, you know, those kind of men. No. And, and they're starting to kind of 
uh, go inside and, and see, you know, what is missing and what, mm. you, know, I, you know, something is not quite right. I don't know what mm. it is. I can't put my finger on it, but mm. something is missing. And that's bringing them back to, you know, the character traits that we're talking about, you know, mm. the, the morals, the character, the integrity, mm. honor, because, mm. you know, and, and Hollywood knows it. They know that those things, when they show movies like that, mm. I mean, they're, they're, they take off. They're good movies mm. and people like them because people want to actually live their life like that. They yes. want to you know, be a man of, of character, a man mm. of the code mm. and have a code and stand up for what's right, mm. even if it means standing alone. They mm. want to be that kind of person, mm. but nobody's taught them how to do it. And that's mm. what I try to teach in my books. Mm. Well, it's probably, um, yeah, look, as, as we begin to wrap it up, mate, I think, I, I, I want your opinion. Was it a little scary to you how quickly people didn't do that over the last few years? I mean, it was a bit scary to me. Um, there, there was obviously, there's a percentage of men and women for that matter that have tried to stand up. However, geez, a, a lot of them didn't, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah, it, it, it's, it was, uh, it's very scary. And it's, uh, you know, you, you know, to go back, you know, I used to teach history, like mm -hmm. I told you earlier. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've always, I just couldn't even comprehend it. You know, how could the Jewish people in Nazi Germany not stand up and fight? They know that, that the Nazis were going to kill them. We're going to mm -hmm. shoot them. We're going to exterminate them. And yet they just, you know, walked to the edge of the pit and stood there. You know, if somebody's going to shoot me, you know, I'm not going to walk to the pit, you know, make it easy on them and walk to the pit and turn my back so they can shoot me in the back of the head. Mm. You know, if, if, if I know somebody is trying going to kill me, I'm going to die, go down fighting. Absolutely. You know, yeah. you know they might kill me, but I'm going to try to, my best to take one or more of them yeah, with exactly me. as many as like as many as, and, yeah, uh, as many as coming with me as well yeah and it, we're seeing you know i could never i could never understand how mm. they did that you know mm. what what they were you know what their thought processes were mm. and we're seeing it yes we replayed are. we're yeah, not not to that same you know level not but yet. we're seeing it replayed today and it's like okay um they're taking our freedoms away Mm -hmm. uh surely you know so i bet people are going to start standing up okay mm -hmm. what are you doing you're not standing up either no. yeah yeah everybody is waiting on somebody else to stand up i know and that's starting to change yes uh, that's yeah. you, know, you can see it in canada you can see it in england uh you, you can see it here in the united states mm -hmm. people are fed up with it mm -hmm. and it's it's almost like they're waiting on somebody to lead them and yeah. to stand up and when they stand up it gives the rest of them courage to stand up as well. Mm. And, and the more it's like a snowball, the more mm -hmm. you, you got to have somebody that starts, it starts with a you know, small yeah. little ball of snow, yeah. but the more you roll it, the bigger it gets yeah, yeah, and the yeah. more momentum it takes going yeah. down the hill mm -hmm. until it, it, you know, that small snowball turns into a giant ball of snow. Yeah. And I think that we're starting to see, People are no longer waiting. There's, you know, this is not acceptable, and they're no, standing not. up. Other people see it. They get motivated. They start mm -hmm. standing up. Then more people see it, and the more the more that happens, you know, the stronger the people get, and yeah. the weaker uh, the, the opposition you know, gets. The, yeah, I think I, I think that one of the key things that you just said there that I, I wanted to ask about is how the leadership thing's a big issue. Yeah. It's like, there is no politician that I can think of anywhere in the world. And I, I keep abreast of global situations, right? So yeah. I know there's not a politician that I can think of that is actually a leader. You know, none of them. Well, are. that's because politicians are not leaders. No. They're two different animals. Yeah. yeah, 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 <laughs> you've, yeah, got, yeah. you've got, you've got leaders and then you have politicians. Mm. You know, they're they're not even the same mm -hmm. species. Yeah, it's it's two different. You know, a politician only cares about one thing. You know, I I served as a page. You know, for the House of Representatives, and uh, when I was growing up, it was kind of a uh, like a, a internship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, my cousin 
was a representative at the time. Mm -hmm. And so he kind of got me into politics. And, you know, I went up to the Capitol, was with him. And I was so shocked and blown away by, you know, just, just it, it, it was a total joke. Yeah. You know, I would go in, the, the Congress would be in session. You would have some people sleeping. You'd have some people reading the comics. And, and you, know, you have somebody up there giving a speech. Nobody cared. They weren't listening. They weren't influencing. They were standing up there, you know, just for the sound bites, mm -hmm. you know, for the camera. Mm -hmm. Nobody listened to him. Nobody cared. And they said, okay, it's time for a vote. They would, you know, wake their buddy up, and put the paper down, and you got a red button and a green button. And they would either hit yes or no on the, and then go back to doing what they were doing. And, and that happened every day. At the end of the day, they would rush back to their condo or the hotel room to see, you know, who got on the news, what the news bites are, you know, who got on this. And then, okay, uh, yeah, after, you know, sitting there watching the news for about an hour, they get ready to go out with a lobbyist every minute. Every night, this happened every single night I was there. Right, right. Go out to the lobbies at Ruth Chris Steakhouse. And, you know, there. I remember I went out with them, for, you know, three times. Mm. We went to that, and that's, you know, Ruth Chris Steakhouse, really good food, mm. very expensive. Mm. And that was back in the late 70s. Mm. And each time we went out, it was like a $900 bill. There was four of us. In the late seventies, they sit there and drink That's wine. Nine hundred dollars in the seventies. Yeah, oh my God. yeah, yeah. The, and and the lobbyists paid for the whole thing, and you know it was it was just buying votes. And mm. and then after they got done with the lobbyists, you know I, I was you know I was underage at the time. You know, it was mm. a you know intern for kids, and he would drop me back off at the hotel, and he would go to the whorehouses. Right. And and then they would come back and you know the honorable so and so yeah <laughs> yeah yeah where the hell's the honor at you know, yeah, I didn't yeah. see it yeah, yeah, <laughs> and yeah. it was like that day after day after day and it's just photo ops you know lobby money mm. and it, it's just a cycle those those are not leaders no those are politicians you know looking at what's in it for me. So how do They're we change? Not how, at what's how do we it? change it, mate? How do we? Because I mean, I know you said, look, obviously your vote's important, and it is. Yeah. However, you're voting for that person you just described, so it's like, yeah. Well, what we need is regular people running for office. You know, yeah. We don't we don't get regular people like you and me running for office because we're busy raising a family, mm. you know, trying to make a living, you know, doing what we do. Mm. And you know, the politicians are people who basically have done very little their whole life apart from and that. they just want they want yeah you know, in, here in the united states i'm not sure how it is elsewhere you know if you're in the senate for one term mm. you've got your retirement for life you can be in there one time you get voted out the next election you still get you know whatever that uh that uh, retirement pack that uh yeah you get uh, like money it's same down here yeah, yeah. if you if you make and, it to a certain level you get uh, yeah. pension for life and yeah you get the pension for life and, and, sort of in the congress if you're in there for two terms you get it for life yeah, yeah they're there to line their pockets and you get into the congress and senate i don't know exactly how much their salary is i haven't looked it up lately yeah, yeah. but it, it's around it's under 150 a year mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and most of those guys come out of there being multi-millionaires yeah, okay tell me this how, how do you work in a place for 10 15 years you're making 100 to 150 thousand a yeah. year at the most yeah and yet when you leave there you you have you know 50 million dollars yeah, exactly. in the bank yeah. Yeah, you know yeah, yeah. that's you know we need leaders who have the character to put the country first the people yeah. first and themselves last and see themselves mm. as a servant, not a leader or not, you know, some big. They see themselves as, you know, a, as a servant of the people as opposed yeah. to a, a tyrant or, 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 or that, that narcissistic personality that seems exactly. to attract it. You know, I think it's. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and, you know, we're. Uh, go ahead. People, oh, just, I was just, I mean, people power, like. Is it, is it, um, you know, this, this, we, if we get back to the books and the esoteric wisdom, you know, we talk a lot about a council of 
elders or, or a council of people, you know? And I think, yeah, you know, one of the balances we're missing is that it needs to be men and women. You know, I think, you know, men have, right. got, a lot, men have got a lot to pay for at the moment, right? All those problems that we have at the moment falls on the shoulders of men. You know, th there needs to be, a, if you go back to say tribal, like, you know, part of the ancient stuff to look at in a tribal situation, yeah you would have a council. There'd be a men's council, there'd be a women's council, and then they would come together and they would make a decision based mm -hmm. on the evidence that was provided for the betterment of the tribe. And that's the you key, know? the betterment for the tribe, the betterment yeah. for the community, the people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we have too many people that are in it just for what's best for them. Exactly. You know, how much money can they make? How much uh, fame can they get? Mm. And how can they use this position as a stepping stone to move up higher. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. you know, and we're seeing that change here in the United States. Uh, just this last election in New Jersey, which is a very liberal state, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's, you know, they, they almost always vote uh, for a Democrat. Mm -hmm. We had a trucker there. I think he spent 250 bucks on his campaign and he won his Senate seat. <laughs> pe people it. are waking up and, exactly. and they, yeah. and that's what we need. Regular people that, and you know, I know Trump was unpopular with some people, but you know, that's what made tr Trump good is mm -hmm. he was a, a regular guy who, you know, had, he, he had businesses. He mm -hmm. came up working, you know, he had lots of money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He started with a million dollars from his dad. Mm -hmm. he, he had a much easier start than most people. Mm -hmm. But, you know, he took that, he parlayed it into, you know, a couple of billion dollars. Well, I see, and, Trump, he, I see Trump is, is, is the, is the, is the, 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 the stick in the spokes, you know, it's like we, that, that you guys had had enough. Yeah. Um, and look, you can say, I, look, I, I, I won, I've always, it's now that you look, even now, it's like, what is history going to say about Trump? Because mm. letting granddad take the wheel of the free world you know, is, wasn't the best idea. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's an understatement. It's, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. And you know, the the you know, I know, yeah. You know, his personality, Trump's personality, was very abrasive. You know, his mm -hmm. language was not what you know people are used to. No. And, you know, you know, I mean, if you take away the money, he's a regular guy, a businessman, mm -hmm. and he was there. Yeah, you know, he didn't have to do it. You know, right. he, he has his businesses. He, he was very popular before he became president. That's right. Before he started running for president, all, all these people who hate Trump now, they loved him. They wanted That's, photo exactly. ops with him. That's right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But he was a regular guy and he went in there and he wasn't going to play the game because he mm. did. He had money. He didn't mm. need money. He couldn't be bought. Mm. And and that's what we need is regular businessmen, people who have some common sense, who, mm. you know, you know, it, you know, it would be ideal if they lived by some, you know, decent principles exactly, and yeah. standards. It's integrity again, isn't it, Mike? Integrity and mm. honor and are in there not, you know, for how much money they can make or, mm. you know, to parlay that position into becoming whatever else, no. but is are there to serve the people mm. and to bring the country back and make it the best it can be exactly. for people and for our freedoms. And I think, and, the, the morals and I think we're well. seeing that the, the morals as well. It's like, you know, if you're the president and you're making $800,000 a year, why do you need more than that? Yeah. Like, yeah, it, why, you, why, why like, I, I think the president makes maybe, uh, I don't know, 200, 250. I haven't looked lately, no. but I mean, so you know, think about this, the last election, both sides spent billions of dollars yeah. to get a to get a job that pays 200, 250,000 a year. Yeah. yeah. And you know, that, that doesn't make sense. It's like, okay, would you invest billions of dollars to make to, 250 grand? Yeah. Yeah. You just go spend billions of dollars to make 250,000 a year. Mm. Yeah, that doesn't make any sense. You know, there, there's so much you know, that's going on in our governments. And people need to take the, the governments back. Absolutely. I mean, it, it's there for one purpose, to serve and protect the people. Exactly. Not, we've lost not, sight to, of that. not to, you know, ride roughshod over the people mm -hmm. or control every aspect of their lives, yeah. but to serve the people. And they've lost that. that mm -hmm. And that's the main 
that's the main thing that's going wrong with our countries today. I think I saw I saw a tweet from an NFL guy the other day, and he's like. I can't remember the guy's name. I don't know many of the players, but it was a good tweet. He was like, how come as a professional NFL player, I can't bet on the games, which I'm totally okay with. Then how come politicians can know the movements in the stock market? You know what I mean? How exactly. Come they, exactly. You know, what's the difference? Like there is yeah, no difference. Yeah, there, there's not any difference. In, mm. you know, like I said, you know, the lobbyists are spending you know, millions and millions of dollars mm-hmm you know, trying to get a vote and doing this and they get vacations paid. They get, oh yeah, they get dinners. Like I was talking about, they get everything paid for. Mm. And it's because they're, you know, they're trying to influence the vote. And I think, and the same thing, the companies are doing the same thing. Pfizer, you know, as we talked about earlier, I'm not going to get into all that. We're not doing that today. Yeah, (laughs) But anyway, uh, you know, people are seeing that Mm. and, you know, this is part of what has disrupted most people's inner peace. You know, th- Absolutely they're, li- they're not yeah. living at peace. They're no. living full of fear, you know, worry, stress. Mm-hmm. And you can't, you can't, you know, be living your life with, you know, every second of the day, you know, being fearful of one thing mm. or worried about everything or stressed out. Mm. I mean, those are not, uh, they are not compatible with inner no, peace. Definitely not. And, definitely not. And so I, that's, yeah, I have a whole chapter on worry and a chapter on fear in the yeah, book yeah. because you have to deal with those things in order mm-hmm. to live a life of inner peace. Well, I think fear is a big one, isn't it? You know, I think fear, it's like oh, yeah. fear holds you back from everything, you know? Like, yeah. When and, you, and yeah. It, it's, you know, fear and worry is a waste of time. Absolutely. You know? And, uh, you know, I give the example of a venomous snake in the book mm-hmm. and people you know so many people are scared of snakes i'm sure you know from what i've seen on tv it's probably a big time fear down in australia oh we don't worry about it mate just don't poke it. it's okay <laughs> just leave them alone yeah and and you know you, know, you don't and the people say well you have to be afraid of snakes they can kill you yeah. but just because something can kill you doesn't mean you have to be afraid of it you have to be knowledgeable about aware you know mm. their their environment you know how how they behave what mm. to expect from them how to stay away from them mm. but you don't have to walk around scared of them you know no, that's right yeah and you don't that, have to live in fear i mean that's the 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 analogy from overseas people is like oh all the most dangerous animals live in australia everything's going to kill you well it's like yeah okay maybe but as an aussie we don't well as it as an old school aussie bloke i don't worry about that stuff right you know what i mean like yeah. i um i wasn't that it was a few months ago now but i was riding i just said i'd like to ride my mountain bike and uh riding my mountain bike down a, down a track and there was a red belly black snake. Now they're not super venomous, but you know, they, they'll, they can potentially kill you if you don't get it treated correctly. Mm-hmm. Now I didn't stop the bike and turn around and go, ah, you know, I, yeah. I knew what the snake would do. So I went around the back of it. Now, did it turn and have a bit of a go? Yeah, it did, but I knew it wasn't going to get me. You know, there's no need to, um, to overreact you know, yeah. I mean, again, you talk about worry and fear as you, like I said earlier, I'm literally cut off, mate. You know, it, the, the road out of my town is flooded as we see, it hasn't stopped raining the entire time we've been talking. Am I yeah. worried about that? No, because I know where I am. I'm fine. I've got fuel. I've got a generator. I've got food, food where, you know, my wife, and my kids are okay. Uh, what's the point? You know, yeah, of course, and, of course yeah. I'm going to do this interview, you know? And Triffin, if you would have, if you would have, instead of doing this interview, sit there and been stressed out and worried about the water rising, mm. you know, and that, you know, we've been, you know, talking, you know, for a while now, mm. you know, you wouldn't be in any different position right now huh. than you are right you know, now. Yeah, you know, it's. Well, you know, I'm a lot better now. One I'm, thing. A lot, I'm a lot better now because I've had the pleasure of talking yeah. to you. You know, but, you know, worry never changes anything. No. Or never, never ch- oh, let me take that back. It never changes anything for the better. Yeah. You know, what it worry does do a lot of things inside your body. Yeah. 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 And, it, you know, and I go into that in detail in the yeah. book. I'm not going to cover it all, but it has no, a no, lot no. of, it has a lot of effects on your health Absolutely. and your mind. And so it, I can't say it doesn't do anything. It doesn't no, it does. do anything good, good for you. Yeah. That's right. I, I, one of the things in my, in, in my teaching is I ask the, uh, you know, who's a, a warrior and not like a, oh, sorry not like a, a warrior, but like a, a who worries a lot. Uh-huh. And people will put their hand up and I go, okay, here's a question. 
how much of what you worry about actually comes true? Is it even 1%? Right. It's not. It's not. Like, it's like, you know, it's not even 1% of what you worry about actually really comes true. Okay. So it's not even 1%. Then what's the point? What, why, why are we worrying? Exactly. About it? You know what I mean? But that, that one, that time they spent worrying about whatever it is, mm. if they, if they hadn't worried about it, it would have been no effect. That's but right. since they spent all that time worrying about it, whatever it was that didn't even manifest actually did affect exactly. their lives. Yes. Yes. They sit there and worried about it over and, and over. It. That's what it's like. Oh, this is going to, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. It's like, and then it happened. Oh, see, I told you so. It's like, well, did you bring that into your existence? By exactly. Worrying about it exactly. for two weeks. You know what I mean? Like there's, there's, there's a whole heap of all that ancient wisdom about manifestation and, and, yeah. and thoughts and all those sorts of things, mate. And you know, if you know, it's funny you said that about manifesting it, you know, you do your thoughts, your words, you know, do manifest Absolutely. what happens in your life. Mm -hmm. You know, it, you know, you, your thoughts start in your subconscious mind. Mm -hmm. Then you have, you, you start to dwell on that thought. Mm -hmm. Then you talk about it. Mm -hmm. Soon that affects your action one way or another. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you're giving that, you're feeding that energy. Mm -hmm. And the more you worry about it, the more you talk about it, the mm -hmm. more you think about it, mm -hmm. the more likely you're causing that to come about and Absolutely. to manifest you into are. your life. Yeah. And, and yeah, that's another reason you shouldn't worry and mm -hmm. you shouldn't be afraid of stuff. I mean, it doesn't change stuff. You can, mm -hmm. you can, you can sit there afraid of that snake all day long mm -hmm. and he's still going to cross the road, whether you're afraid of it or you yeah, it worry about it. He doesn't, what he's care, doing. It exactly. doesn't change anything no. that's you know, happening there. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's, there's so much like that, that, and yeah, that's why I wrote the art of inner peace. Yeah. You know, I spent so much time thinking, Oh gosh, you know, these guys are hurting my reputation. Oh, mm -hmm. what am I gonna do? I can't I can't do my roundhouse kicks anymore. I can't do this. Yeah, yeah. And and I got to think, yeah, this is ridiculous. You know, mm -hmm. I, and you know, whatever's gonna happen is gonna happen. Mm -hmm. And I'm just gonna live my life mm -hmm. and not going to, you know, sit here and worry about it. Mm -hmm. And it's um, so I sit down and wrote, wrote the art of inner peace. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wrote it, you know. You know, I write all my books to help other people, yeah. but I also wrote this one to help myself. To help yourself, yeah. And, and you know, I go back and re read it. And, you know, if I start getting stressed about something, I go back and read it, and I, I get myself back in line. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Uh, you know, that, that's kind of what I was thinking writing this book is mm -hmm. it's a roadmap, you know, for people to follow for inner peace. And it's written mm -hmm. in such a way that if they you know, have a problem with, okay, say they're unhappy, Mm -hmm. and, and they can't seem to get happy okay mm -hmm. they can go to the chapter they can reread that chapter mm -hmm. and they think you know I, I i see what i'm doing wrong i can i can be happy if i want to be happy absolutely and they yeah. can fix it mm -hmm. well I suppose mate leads me to my uh probably my last question buddy i really appreciate your time mate and uh mm -hmm. we'll, we'll wrap it up and it, it's a it's not a small question we don't do small questions here at unlocking the code however what was you know, when, when I ask you what was the lesson that came out of writing the Inner Peace series or what was the two things that really, uh, obviously after, you know, I mean, again, you've studied this for so many years and it, it, you never, yeah. we never stop learning. And I, and I, and I get that. Well, for, are you okay, mate? Now, mate, how's your health? How's your tumor? Is that under control or where, where are you at? Uh, yeah, I, I'm getting better every day. I'll okay. Leave That's it good. at that. All right. Fair enough, mate. And look, all the best, man. I'll send send energy your I way to, that. to keep going. Uh, but yeah, you know, yeah, you know, I think when you when you well, you know, as a teacher, when you teach, you learn. You know, absolutely, you're learning more, and you're reinforcing what you're teaching. Absolutely, yeah. And, and that's what this book did for me as well. I you know a lot of these principles I put in there, I've studied for years. I yep, knew yeah, it. But yep. you know, when you get when you get stressed and you you have so many problems to deal with and so many challenges. Mm -hmm. You can kind of you tend to forget the things that you know, you know about. Uh, I need to be meditating. Yes. Okay. I need you know this is ridiculous. I don't need to be stressing myself out. I don't mm -hmm. need to be worried. You know, you tend to forget that stuff. It's easier mm -hmm. to forget, and that's mm -hmm. why I say, you know, the hardest part of living in inner peace is the maintenance. You have to maintain that inner peace. Yeah. And 
it's very easy to get sidetracked. Mm -hmm. You can get sidetracked with you know, what other people do, what they mm -hmm. say, mm -hmm. how they behave, mm -hmm. or you can get sidetracked with just how you know things are affecting your own life. Absolutely. And yeah. you have you have to stay focused. So it's not a one-time thing or, or even a hundred time thing. You have to do this every day, mm -hmm. all day long. Mm -hmm. And it's not like people say, well, how can you focus on doing something like that every day, all the time? That that's that's crazy. You would be doing nothing else, but it's not like that. You just have to be mindful. You have mindful. to, yes. you have to be yep. thinking about what you're doing. You have to think before you react. You don't mm -hmm. react, you respond. Mm -hmm. And people say, well, you know, I looked in the dictionary, you know, reacting and responding are, are the same thing. No, they well, they, they have the same definition in the yeah, dictionary, yeah. They're but not, they're not the same. They're not at all. They're not at if, all. You know, if, if, you know, if a bug flies at my eye, you know, I'm going to blink. Yeah. That that's a reaction. Mm. You know, when you respond to somebody, you have to actually think about how I'm going to respond. What am I going to say? You know, what am I going to do? Mm. That's What's the response. variation. That's your the mind, variation. Yeah. And the difference is, mm. you know, you don't think about blinking your eye when a when a, a bug flies at you. No. You know, you it's an automatic response mm -hmm. or automatic reaction. Mm. But you know, if I get uh, personally attacked. You know, somebody writes a, a nasty review of, of and attacks me. You know, he's a scumbag. He's this. He's that. Mm. Then I get a. You know, I can respond to that. I don't have to react in anger or you know, it, you, you let it blow me out. No. I can be mindful and respond to that mm. how I decide to respond. Mm. And that's yeah. the difference. One way you're in control. The other way you put you know, the environment, the other people, whatever, in control of you. You have to stay in control of yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that. I love that, man. I love that. I tell you, do you know what we're going to do? What's we're that? Gonna do, we're going to do this bloke called uh, Bodie Sanders. I've got his book here. That's my right? first book I ever wrote. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> um, and so this is what we do, right? So close your eyes. All right. And we open it up. <laughs> did it again what was the quote that i sent to you on the email every moment of every moment of life is the last so out of all the pages that i could open up that's the quote that i shared uh, with you in order to tee this interview that's up. that's very interesting right and then the next one look at this only one who continually re-examines himself and corrects his faults will grow is that not what we've been talking about? That's perfect. The whole time, man. And that's perfect. what these books do, buddy. That's what these books do, mate. And that, uh, that is really man. amazing. That's that, perfect. That, that you know, I get so do. many on uh, social media, I get so many comments when I post, you know, I, and a lot of what I post is excerpts from you know yeah. my books. Yeah. And I get so many comments. Oh, this is exactly what I needed to hear today. It's like you can read my mind. Exactly. <laughs> and there you go. You just saw it. That is that is how we use your book, yeah. man. And it, you know, we just had that, it, you know, an hour and a half, two hour conversation and it encapsulated it in two Yeah, parts, and, and that, uh, that's exactly what we were talking about. You have to examine yourself every mm -hmm. day mm -hmm. and, and throughout the day. Mm -hmm. and, and that's, you know, that basically is what being mindful boils down to. Absolutely. You have yeah. to just, you have to be mindful of what you're doing, what you're thinking, what you're saying. Mm -hmm. And if you are, then the more, the more you do that, the inner peace starts to develop and it's just like the snowball we talked about. It starts mm. to, you know, get bigger and bigger and until it becomes a habit and you don't have to react negatively. You don't have to let somebody that's rude to you in the store Absolutely. blow you out or, or, you know, make you have a bad day because mm. you're mindful. You stop yourself and you say, no, I'm not going to let that jerk make ruin my day. You know, mm. he, he, I'll never see him again. I don't know him. Yeah, you know, he's yeah. not going to affect my life, and you That's move right. on. That's absolutely, mate. Look, I really, really, really appreciate your time, man. I can't. It's been an honor. Oh man, I enjoyed life. it, Triffin. Yeah, it's been really fun. Uh, look, I've got to get the men of the code. Maybe, maybe I'll get that one, and we we have a bit of a chat about that one once I give that one a read. Hey. Um, yeah, I, I, yeah, I, yeah, I'd like to come on anytime you want to chat. Yeah, and I, I really enjoyed it. Oh, I appreciate that, mate. Now in, in Australia, I know because I ordered, I ordered, I've ordered my books directly from you, but because of the, I know the freight's a bit of a stinger from the US. So yeah. 
can you get uh, where where are they available in Australia? Well, Is it I believe you guys are you, you guys have uh, Amazon Australia now, right? Yes, we do. Yeah. So you can get all my books on Amazon. Okay, that'll yeah. be good. That'll yeah, be I, I used I used to send a lot of books to Australia, and you know it used to cost like thirty four bucks to send yeah. a box of books to Australia. Now it's like close to $80, $88. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. just crazy. Mm. But, uh, you know, going through Amazon Australia, will, will I, I, you know, I don't know what they do there. Here, if you order 25 bucks or more, it's free shipping. So yeah, right. that saves you a lot of money. Mm. Well, buddy, thank you very much, sir. I, I, as I say, I really appreciate it. Oh, man. Thank I, you. I, it's, it's been fun. And uh, I, I, yeah, let's sit down again, mate. It'd be it'd be a privilege to have you back on. Yeah, just let me know, Triff, and I, and I'll, I'll be happy to come on. And because uh, I think uh, you and I really click, and we, we could yeah. go on and on for hours. Oh yeah, well, you, you, for, just for the listeners, we 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 talked for forty minutes before we hit the record <laughs> button. <laughs> so thanks very much, buddy. Look after yourself, mate. Please All look right. after your health. Yeah, we need you. No, I will. I will. Um, please look after yourself. Thanks, mate. All right. Well, thank you. It was great to be on with you. No worries. Thanks, buddy. Cheers. Thank you.